In this episode, we're going to review the recently released facts about rebellion conflicts in Splinterlands the game. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here, saying thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. Today, I bring you an update on the critical situation with Rebellion Conflicts. News out from the team yesterday says that Conflicts will release this coming week. January 23rd, during usual game downtime, will be the go-live date. Now, let's take a look at all of the details. As usual, I will leave all the links in the show notes. However, you can also find them in the official Splinterlands Discord announcement section. Okay, now I'm on the uh, support.splinterlands website under the Conflicts FAQ. We can take a look, and basically there will be nine conflicts in total, lasting about 30 days each. Previously, Players received airdrops based on the amount of packs they purchased, with no requirement to hold them. With conflicts, you have to hold packs, and you have to buy rebellion packs, that is, and you have to buy rebellion cards to stake. Each conflict comes with an update to, to the progress of the rebellion, so there will be storyline content to this, as well as artwork content with a new airdrop during each period. To participate in the conflicts, you need to purchase a mage wagon. Mage Wagons cost either 50 vouchers, 10,000 DEC, or 10,000 credits each. By far, the cheapest uh, option is vouchers. 50 vouchers right now is about $2 versus about $10. You also need to own Rebellion cards and or Rebellion packs to stake on the Mage Wagons. These cards must be owned by you. Cards that are delegated or rented to you may not be used in conflicts. Cards that have been delegated out or listed on the market may not be used in conflicts. Each mage wagon allows up to five cards and up to 100 packs to be staked. Please note that the packs do not have to be bought directly from Splinterlands. You can purchase them uh, on the aftermarket. Now, further down on the page, they go into and show the artwork of where the conflicts will be housed on the website and you will go under the shop and under packs and you will have the option to enter rebellion conflicts that is some other items of interest here are that cards and packs removed from mage wagons are not subject to cooldown so you can switch them around at will and will be immediately available to transfer sale or used use on land however actions regarding the management of your mage wagons are subject to cooldown periods after you add cards to a mage wagon, there's a 15 minute cooldown before you can adjust its contents. So you can't just do it over and over and over again. When you hover over the wagon, the text on cooldown and a countdown will appear as designated in this piece of artwork. There is a 60 minute cooldown before you may use the bulk autofill feature again if you have a lot of different wagons. After using the clear all feature, a 15 minute cooldown occurs before you may use it again. Wagon management options may not be taken for 15 minutes prior to the end of the conflict period. So there's got to be enough time for all of the data that you're inputting, the changes you're inputting to sync with the server. So there's going to be a period there where you can't make changes. At the end of the conflict, players who participated can claim their rewards after a 15 minute processing window. That seems pretty quick. Um, but uh, we're looking at the conflicts. They're about 30 days long, and then after everything's tabulated, you can claim after a 15-minute period. Wagon management actions may not be taken for the first 15 minutes after the start of the new conflict. So there's going to be 15 minutes before the end of the conflict and 15 minutes after the end of the conflict where you can't do anything with your wagons. I don't foresee that being an issue. And once again, that's all data sync time right there, right? So, Okay, so what happens when I add rebellion cards to a conflict. Uh, to participate in a conflict, only rebellion cards that you own may be staked in a mage wagon. We stated that before. 
okay? So people can't be loaning it to you. Uh, you can't be loaning out cards to someone else and then also using them for the rebellion. However, the cards you do have staked on the mage wagons can be used to play normally in brawls, tournaments, and rank play. But they can't be traded, rented, delegated, or combined or sold. So that's another item that came up in the all hands was that um, you will have to remove the cards from the wagon, combine, and then re-add them to the wagon. Um, cards can be removed from conflicts at any time and will be instantly available for transfer or sale. We mentioned that before. Uh, you may view uh, cards staked on mage wagons. Um, all of the UI kind of looks very similar to the new land UI that they just developed. So this makes sense. It's consistent. Um, so I think that if you're used to using the land UI, you will be used to using this. So what, what happens when I add rebellion packs to a conflict? Well, basically you're removing them from your inventory where you could go and open them and you're specifically staking them on the wagon much like if you have a CD in a bank, right? So you're putting your money in the CD, you can't just go and access that. So if these packs are on the wagon, you can't readily access them. You could take them off and use them at any point. However, they will be staked to the wagon and removed from your inventory total. The next section is uh, how are points for conflicts calculated? Now I'm gonna go through this and I'm also gonna leave a link in the show notes to a video on this topic that Gathering the Magic put out yesterday that goes into uh, the math much more um, in depth and he's better at that. But after we talk about this for a few minutes, I did um, a use case scenario for myself um, because I'm gonna run the numbers for you and I'm gonna tell you about them. And then everybody, depending upon your situation, is gonna have a different take on this, right? And it just depends upon what you value and what you wanna put your money in. So let's look at the numbers first and see how they work out. Okay, so contribution to conflicts is calculated based on the total collection power of your staked cards. We're used to collection power. If you've been around, uh, it's listed on every card. Um, so it's, it's easy to total. So, and you're gonna take your total of your collection power plus the total of the packs uh, 100 for each pack you have staked and then divide that by 100,000 and that equals your chances each like i said each stake pack adds 100 contribution per hour towards the conflict the total collection power of the cards in a mage wagon which is a maximum of five combined with its staked power determines its contribution per hour and then you multiply that by 24 24 in a day, and then you multiply that out by the number of the days in the month that are left. For every 100,000 contribution ac uh, accumulated, one chance at an airdrop is granted. No half or partial chances will be awarded. You need 200 chances to get a guaranteed airdrop. For the duration of the conflict, your stake cards and packs will continuously contribute to the war effort. Each conflict will last around 30 days and may be joined at any time before it ends. So you don't have to, obviously, the longer you're in it, the better chances you have. Um, but you don't have to be worried about it. Just, you know, you can join at any time. Okay. So with that said, now we've discussed that. Let's take a look at my use case. Now, I've stepped back and I've looked at the numbers. And I've seen that it's going to take a lot of money. Uh, to invest in card packs and rebellion cards, which are very highly limited at this point on the store, um, to put into uh, staking on mage wagons to get yourself airdrops guaranteed. So basically okay. put, that's a lot of money for me, okay? This is different for everybody. You know, you have to consider your situation and what your take on the game is and how much money you want to put in it, et cetera and how much those airdrop cards are worth to you, okay? I've always maintained that it's better off waiting and buying singles on the market, even though you're gonna pay a premium. Overall, it's still usually better than paying this huge amount of money for staked packs and uh, a lot of cards and everything like that. Now, with this said, this time around, it's much different because you can use staked cards and still play with them. So that's a, a better utility for me. Okay, so I've stepped back and I've thought about this. And I've thought, well, the first thing I wanna get out of Rebellion 
is some summoners, okay? So I'm playing long. Uh, Archmage plays my matches on a daily basis in Wild, but I would like some of the new Rebellion summoners. So I can foresee myself, my first actions in Rebellion is buying some summoners, right? So I foresee, and I have 50 Rebellion packs, which I bought in the pre-sale. I don't really foresee me buying a whole lot more, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stake those. So let's look at the math on my use case scenario. Okay, in my use case, I have 50 Rebellion packs. Now, each one of those gets 100 points each. That's 5,000 points. Now, say that, you know, a, a, a good good a guess here is buying me buying three rare summoners. I have to buy them at level six because I play in gold. That equals, uh, they are each 1,200 power each, uh, collection power each, okay? So we have 8,600 total times 720 hours in a month equals 6,192,000 divided by 100,000, which uh, each 100,000 will get you one full chance for your airdrop. That equals 61.92 or 61 chances for airdrop because you don't get rounded up, you get rounded down and there are no partial chances. Okay. We also know that it takes 200 full chances to get one guaranteed card. So at this point, I have to ask myself, well, how much did I spend on this? Okay, so at this point in time, we uh, look at the Rebellion packs. 50 packs is about $200 on the secondary market. Okay. Now, also on the store, I just before I did this video, I looked up the prices. And you can get, um, and I just went off the, the cheapest uh, rare summoner uh, for Rebellion. And uh, each rare summoner at level 6 would be about $25. Now... We all know the prices fluctuate on the store, but uh, and also the the amount of actual cards, rebellion cards on the market, is very low compared to what we're used to, like in Chaos Legion and everything. So get ready for wild price swings, okay? Because once people start buying these cards up specifically for use on uh, the mage wagons, uh, you may find that certain cards you, you just can't find any on the market. And your only option is to buy packs. So staking packs may be a better option. So in my example here, I have $200 worth of packs. I have $75 worth of summoners. And I have 50 vouchers. Okay, Most of us who have been playing for a while, you've got a lot of vouchers built up. Now there's something extra you can do with those. Okay, Even, even, not, even if you don't have plenty of vouchers, it would still be worth your time to acquire those vouchers on uh, the uh, you know Hive Engine or something or other. Um, because it's much cheaper than using DEC or credits, right? So I have roughly just discounting the vouchers, uh, 275, 200, uh, $278, uh, $77 worth of vouchers, okay? So roughly, I would, I would have to multiply that by three and a half times to be able to get one full chance at, or one guaranteed airdrop. So I have to ask myself, now even though the airdrop looks really nice, do I want to put another 275 times 3 into that? Okay, You may. It may be worth it to you. right? To me, it's not. Okay, So in my particular situation, uh, I would probably prefer to go in with my uh, stated use case because I'm going to use those summoners anyway. I'm going to buy those summoners for play anyway, so why not just buy them and stake them, right? Now, as time goes along, the prices may go down, but you can continually evolve and, just like on land, change what you have on that battle wagon. So, what happens when a conflict ends? Okay, so we already talked about a few of these things. So, 15 minutes prior and 15 minutes after uh, the conflict ends you and the new one begins, you cannot take any actions on your battle wagon. After that, it's all fair. It's, it's, it's data sync time, right? So um, you wouldn't want to do that anyway because you would have this fear of did it sync, did it not sync? So it's logical, okay? So a new conflict will start immediately after the previous one ends and then your points will reset um, and then you will start accruing points towards the new one. Now, each conflict uh, will have a different card and they'll announce it. The first one was announced. It's a big dragon. Uh, he's called Raged. Uh, 
uh, let me see if I can increase. If you can see that, let's increase it a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. No, I don't need help. Okay. So here's Rage. He's a big dragon, and uh, as far as I know, that's the biggest card that's ever been, as far as mana wise, uh, released in Splinterlands. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments and tell me which one to check out that takes more than 16 mana to get out there. But check out everything he has. You know, at the max level, five shield, 11 health, five magic damage, uh, four speed, and a bunch of different powers. Let's see, uh, flying, void, weapons training, life leech, and affliction. So he really looks like a really nice card. Of course, they want to put a really nice card out there and tempt you into using the new system. That's great. Uh, all I'm saying is step back, do the math, and consider what you're going to put into it, and is it worth it to you? Okay? A few well, other tidbits uh, before we round this out. Uh, the first conflict is going to be called A Call to Arms, and it looks like they've put uh, a lot of thought into the storyline. Um, obviously, Nate and his team are good with that as far as uh, developing the artwork. Very uh, proliferous with the information in the town hall and uh, a lot of energy behind that. I'll leave it at that. So uh, it's good that they have a storyline and they're trying to develop the game that way uh, down the road. So we'll see how that goes. Um, he says the guaranteed minimums, we talked about this, 200 chance gets you one card. Um, there will be 4,000 Rage cards distributed for the first airdrop. Um, and uh, each airdrop card rewarded, awarded will have a 2% chance of being a gold foil version. Players will also have the option to spend voucher tokens to increase the chance from 2 to 4% prior to completing your claim. And this is what the UI looks on that. And, of course, they'll have uh, a button to be able to review the results of the conflict and all the information on uh, what you claimed, you know, and uh, links to verify that on the blockchain data. So this is very nice. They developed a new screen here where you can uh, get very in-depth and have a, a, a UI kind of uh, look at the verification of the conflict rewards from the blockchain. So pretty interested if you're into that. And then they go through uh, what it looks like on the transaction looks like on Hiveblock. And um, there will be a leaderboard. And I guess their take on this is that if we put a leaderboard out there, people will get competitive and try to, you know, you see more people are competing. So you're going to buy more packs and buy more cards and stake on the wagon. So that's the whole idea behind that. Um, last question here. Um, can I combine cards staked on mage wagons? I think I touched, touched on that uh, before. Not currently, but the feature is in development. Uh, for the first conflict, participants will need to remove their cards from the mage wagon, combine them, and re-add them. So, and there's no cooldown on that, so it's a relatively fast uh, process. And they were discussing this in the town hall that this is this is in the works. So, so with that said, I think we'll round this up. Um, pretty good piece of information there. Uh, you know, get ready uh, for the go live date. Uh, whether you're going to use DEC, whether you're going to use credits, or uh, probably should use vouchers to save a little bit of money. Um, think about your cards. Get your cards in line if you're going to stake cards. Also, get your packs in line um, and kind of go into it with a plan. Um, I don't think there's any rush to it because uh, they also stipulated that there's there's no maximum amount of, of wagons you can have. The, the whales um, uh, can have as many as they want. Um, the main takeaway there was that it's going to behoove you to have higher level cards staked than a bunch of different wagons with a bunch of lower level cards. So think about it that way. The way I'm thinking about it is I'm just going to go in and I'm going to buy some cards that I want to use anyway to play on my account. And then I'm going to stake them because you can stake them and use them at the same time. This has been Bronze Dragon. If you like this update, please consider giving me a like and subscribe. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy, and I will see you on the flip side.